believe you're capable of running the top law enforcement uh, agency in this country? Well, you look at everything that I've done in this department for the past three years, and you look at the department in the state that it was in when I got here. You either die lied or you were grossly incompetent. I don't know how long you've been here, um, but my hope would be that, you know, we can get beyond that kind of interaction. How many more Border Patrol agents would have had to die as a part of Operation Fast and Furious for you to take responsibility? That kind of question, um, I, I think, is, is frankly, and again, respect, I, I think that's beneath a member of Congress. And some of these questions, even though happening over the past several weeks and months, continue to grow. Eric Holder now repeatedly under fire uh, for the gun-running operation known as Fast and Furious. Now new reports for the first time. A Democrat is openly refusing to support him. Blue Dog Democrat Congressman Dan Bourne out of Oklahoma saying no comment when asked whether or not he still had confidence in the Attorney General. He joins dozens of lawmakers calling for Holder's resignation. Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz is on the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. He's my guest from his home state of Utah. And, sir, welcome back here to America's Good Newsroom. Morning. Why do you think this list keeps growing? Because the Attorney General has not been candid and forthright in providing documents to the United States Congress as he, re, as he is required with the subpoenas. The Inspector General at the Department of Justice has had access to nearly 80,000 documents, yet the United States Congress has only received about 6,000 documents. We think he's in violation of a subpoena, and we're getting to the point where our frustration has just gone beyond the point of reason, and, you know, we're looking at and considering uh, holding the Attorney General in uh, contempt. Well, you have not joined this list, however, and you're sitting on the committee. Why not? Well, it's sitting on the committee on both Judiciary and the Oversight Committee. I want to see all the documents before I come to the final conclusion. What I think, though, is clear at this point is that despite what President Obama has said repeatedly throughout his uh, campaign and then uh, his term in the White House, is they're not being candid and forthright. They are not providing the documents, the openness and transparency that he, that he promised. Well, you are clearly dubious and, uh, about his truthfulness. So why not just come out and say it? Call for his resignation. Well, if I'm going to sit on the panel that's going to help uh, offer some judgment here and be objective in looking at it, I want to see all the documents. I think at the point that we're at now, they, of the 22 categories of subpoenas that we've offered, there are 13 categories in which we've had zero documents. I think it's fair to insist that we get those documents, review those documents, air this out so that it never, ever happens again, and then make that judgment. Okay, That's the, at least know, the approach that I've taken. You know they've given tens of thousands of documents to the, interner, uh, the inspector general at yep. the Department of Justice. Yep. I know you're looking, I think, for 80,000 documents in total, of which you have six or 7,000 yep. on hand. But those documents have gone internally. What would be the difference in giving them to them uh, as opposed to uh, giving them to you? Well, I think that goes to the point that they, uh, the Department of Justice is potentially in contempt. And, and we, as uh, the Oversight Committee, uh, Chairman Issa is doing a wonderful job and being very aggressive with this administration, but also very patient. I think, as you can see, we need to bend over backwards. Uh, the Department of Justice asked for an extension yesterday, marked the five-month uh, a point in which we gave them an extension to provide these documents. But I would hope, and I think we're starting to see now, that on both sides of the aisle, this is not a partisan issue. The Department of Justice must provide the United States Congress these documents, and they haven't thus well, far. You know there are Tea Party groups trying to crank up the pressure on fellow Republicans to, to put more heat on Holder. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think he's hiding? Well, I, I, look, we're looking, we want to know what did he know and when, and was there a potential cover-up? you got to go back to the uh, February, this is like a year ago, February 4th uh, uh, email or document or letter that we got was sent to Senator Grassley. It was an absolute fabrication. It was misleading to the United States Congress. You can't do that at the highest levels. Lanny Brewer, the head of the criminal division, I, I don't think he was candid and forthright. He had to come back later and apologize. But there is, I think, a lot of growing evidence that suggests there was a cover-up at the Department of Justice. We can't we can't stand for that. They, they uh, just cannot will, happen, Bill. We will see where that leads, and if indeed, in the end, that is the case. Jason Chaffetz, thank you at Assault Lake thank City you. today. Thank you. All right.